Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel. This is Kurt Wang. Today, we're going to talk about Photoshop. Recently, Adobe released a new version of Photoshop, version 25, which have some amazing features added to the tool. So today, we're going to talk about three major feature, new features that they added to, to Photoshop that can help landscape photographer a lot. First is the generative fill, second, the generative expand. The third one is the new interaction of remove tool. So without any further ado, let's get started. Hi, this is Kurt Wong, a landscape photographer based in Toronto, Canada. Welcome to my channel. Here, I will tell you my photography stories, share my knowledge and skills, and make photography friends. First, you need to download the new version. So uh, open your Adobe Creative Cloud and check the update. And then you will see the new version available, Photoshop 25. Uh, there is other version earlier this year. Uh, make sure you install the new version, which is uh, 25. Now we can use it. This is a new version of Photoshop. Once it's open, you will see on the top, it shows Adobe Photoshop 2024. The first feature we're gonna talk about is called a generative fill. So this is a feature uh, people have been waiting for. It, it has amazing uh, feature to help us to remove and replace some of the part of the photo that we don't want to keep. Coming to landscape photography, uh, this feature can help us to remove the, uh, the, dis the distraction in the photo. Uh, it can also add and replace the part by using their AI technology, using their AI database. However, for landscape photography, I don't encourage them to uh, you do that uh, because we want to shoot photo, not to make photo. It's okay to, to add in and remove distraction, but not to do uh, like massive change, right? Add a lot of things that doesn't belong to the photo that you shoot. Uh, now let's take a look how we can use this uh, tool. You may have noticed at the bottom there's a bar here. Uh, this bar gonna gonna show you uh, uh, how to give you lots of details, how to use a tool. Uh, if you don't see it, you can go to Windows. Here, the contextual text bar. If you don't have it, you can click on that, it'll pop up. It can give you a lot of choices, but today we're more gonna focus on generative fill. Uh, first, we can use the lasso tool. The part I wanna remove for this photo is this rock here. So I have the skyline in the background, some rock in the mid, mid ground and the foreground, but this part of the photo is, is pretty distracting. So I don't want to keep this one. So I'm going to use the lasso tool to circle the part I don't want to keep. Once I circle it, this bar pop up is showing generative fill. I just need to click on that. You don't you want to remove things right you don't need to uh, type anything just click on generate so it's working on the top and on the right side you see it's it's working on three different version uh, it gives you three different variations so you can choose from there you go you see this is really amazing it looks so perfect they also give you three options. If I click, you see the, the slightly different. Then so you can pick the one that you prefer. Here I wanna I wanna mention uh, the difference between generative fill and the content aware fill. Content aware fill is the one uh, in the older version, uh, still available in this new version too. Uh, that that tool is more uh, for uh, for us to to use the existing part in this photo to replace the part that you want to remove. It doesn't uh, use AI technology or grab uh, a replacement material from their database. So that's the difference. 
we can uh, give it a try to see the difference. So I'm still gonna use a lasso tool, circle that. Instead of click on generated fill, I'm gonna right click and click the content aware fill. Okay, so I'm just gonna choose the, whatever the default is suggested, click OK. There you go. So it, it removed the part, however, it's not perfect. As you can see, it actually used this part of the photo and to replace that part. So it's a big difference. So here, definitely, the generative fill does a way much better job. The other thing I want to show you is, um, uh, you may notice when I click here, it asks me to type things, right? Usually for us to remove small distractions, uh, we don't have to type anything, but you can, if you want to be more specific, want the part to be replaced by something, you can put it there. For example, you can, for example, just show you the feature, right? We're not going to do that. Elastic photography just to create something that doesn't exist. I just want to show you uh, what this generate generative fill can do. Uh, I see a duck. Click on generate. Now it's generating on the right side. It's gonna give you three versions. There you go. You see, uh, it really created a duck here. Uh, you can have different choices. There you go. That was this tool can do. It's really amazing. Still, uh, we want to learn this tool, but of coming to landscape photography, uh, so I usually only use this this tool to remove small distractions, but not to create something that doesn't exist when I shoot this photo. Next one, we're gonna talk about the other feature. It called generative expand. For landscape photography, a lot of time when we edit our photo, we we crop our photo. We do uh, the second composition. It might be different than the original composition when we shoot the photo. Uh, somehow, uh, a lot of time, we want to expand the photo. Maybe uh, we didn't shoot wide enough when we are uh, on site and later on when we add it, we, we just feel like, ah, something's missing. I may want to add some of the part, but probably, you know, uh, when we shoot the photo, we didn't think of that. Now, when we want to add it, it's going to be very hard. In the old days, I, I used to use uh, uh, the content aware fill. Uh, but still we have a limitation is more using existing part of the photo to do the replacement now the new feature of uh, uh, generative uh, expand uh, open another door for landscape photographer uh, it'll make the expanding uh, method way much easier and, and look way much better let's use this photo as an example i showed this moon uh, the full moon with the sun tower a while ago I more want people to look at the moon in the beginning, but later on I just uh, I changed my mind. I want I still think the the main subject is is the the tall thin tower, uh, which is the highest uh, land, landmark in Toronto, Canada. Uh, moon is also important, but I think I more want to make the frame uh, like put thin tower in the middle. This is. This is gonna be hard. If I just do the crop, uh, gonna be a percent tower in the middle. You see, it's gonna be very hard. I probably even gonna be losing some of the moon. So I'm gonna move this. That look better if I have thin tower right in the middle, and I still keep the moon at a, like one third. If I let go. You see. Uh, it asks me if, if I want to generate. And on the top here, the fill, it shows the generative expand. If you click on it, you see you have choices. You can still use the old way, the content aware fill. So let's try this new feature, generative expand. You don't need to do anything. 
If you don't want to add something specific, just uh, let the tool to add thing by itself. I just click generate, and it's working on it. On the right side, the same thing. You will see it's working on three versions. Almost done. There you go. Wow, this is amazing. Look at that. How perfect this is. You just replace the the left side is so perfectly. So that's the new feature, which is uh, really amazing. However, there's one thing I want to mention is don't um, use this this feature too much. Two reasons. First is still for landscape photographer, we we shoot photo, but we don't make photo, right? It's not like we just do composite. We add things that don't exist. Another, the second reason is uh, the resolution of the part that's added is different than your photo. If you enlarge the image, you will see the difference. For example, here, this part on the left is generated by the tool. You see some noises here. But on the right side, which is my original photo, is so smooth. That's the difference. The resolution still not 100% perfect but look from smaller size it's okay so that's how you can use this tool but don't overuse it now let's talk about the third feature all right let's use this photo as an example the third feature is uh, the new interaction of the remove tool which is here the heating and remove tool click on second one remove tool so in the old days it, when we want to remove uh, something for example in this photo this uh, there's a sign here very distracting uh, people so I want to remove that in the old days we have to uh, uh, paint brush the whole thing in order to remove it right so now it has, let me cancel this, because we're gonna use a new way. So the new way is you just need to uh, paint and brush the edge of the subject that you want to remove. Just circle it, and then it'll select the whole subject by itself. For example, this one, I just need to move here, go down here. I don't like this two car either. Let me move them together, go up. Well, I don't need to uh, paint uh, cover all the area. I'll let go. There you go. It select all by itself. And it do the remove job so good. It's so perfect. Maybe this car look like uh, too close to the bottom of the frame. If you want to remove that, let's, let's do it again. There you go. You just circle the edge. Bam. it'll select the whole car, the whole area by itself. And then remove. There we go. It looks very perfect. Let's go. There's a two white dot. I'm gonna remove that. Remove that. There you go. So uh, this is a new feature. It makes our editing much easier. I really uh, like this uh, new uh, added feature. I hope you like it too. Um, that's pretty much it. The three main feature. Uh, I hope you will like it and the practice and use them by yourself. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you like it, click like and subscribe. And uh, we're going to talk about more things about photography, editing, shooting. You know, stay tuned. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.